continuing in Reed's Inquiry into the Human Mind of the Principles of Common Sense, edited by Derek Brooks, we are going to wrap up Chapter 2 on the t sensation of smell. We are about four paragraphs away from the end of Chapter 2 here in Section 9 in this edition, pages 42 and 43. From what hath been said, we may learn that the smell of a rose signifies two things. First, a sensation, which can have no existence but when it is perceived, and can only be in a sentient being or mind. Secondly, it signifies some power, quality, or virtue in the rose, or in the fluvia proceeding from it, which hath a permanent existence, independent of the mind, in which, by the constitution of our nature, we are both led to believe that there is a permanent cause of the sensation, and prompted to seek after it, and experience determines us to place it in the rose. Common sense philosophy teaches that when we human beings perceive the world with taste, sight, smell, hearing, touch, there is the sensation itself, which is the experience, which is necessarily only a thing that can happen in a mind. It is necessarily a thing that can only happen in the mind. An experience can only happen where there is a mind to experience it. The sensation itself must be in the mind, but the sensation is a sign of something existing in the world quite independently of the mind. These are principles of common sense. The instinctive belief in these things is by the original constitution of our nature. It is by that constitution of our nature that we are led to believe that there is a permanent cause of the sensation, that is to say, a thing existing outside the world, quite into, uh, outside the mind, in the world, quite independently of the sensation. And um, that we are led to believe in it by the original constitution of our nature and prompted to seek after it. Experience determines us to place it in the rose. Experience helps us understand uh, what sort of things cause which kinds of sensation. But it's by the original constitution of our nature that we believe in these things. These are the common sense principles that the sensation exists and only in the mind, and that the thing itself exists, which caused the sensation. And it is by means of the sensation that we become acquainted with the thing itself in the world outside the mind. And this is common sense philosophy. This is the more uh, responsible philosophy of perception. This is the correct epistemology and uh, you might even say the correct metaphysics, which must uh, replace the foolish philosophy of certain modern philosophers, in particular Locke and his followers. Now let's be done with this chapter, chapter 2, and uh, perhaps be done with this video in just a moment. Let me mention briefly that chapter 3 is extremely brief. I hope I did tell you chapter 2 would be the shortest investigation of one of the um, human senses. Uh, what it is, is I believe he said the simplest. I hope I didn't paraphrase that as the shortest in an earlier video. The chapter on taste, chapter 3, is only three pages. We may not bother to do a video on it. Uh, we may do one video from the next chapter on hearing, but we shall see. The next chapter on hearing is a mere four and a half pages. Um, perhaps I will see you there.